Okay, sorry. Can I hope you can hear me now. Riha, are you okay? Are you on standby, Riha? Yes, Prof. All right. So, um, and I would just like to ask uh, our guest for today, our guest speaker, uh, Prof. Dato Dr. Rashila Ramli, if she could turn on her video so we can all see her as well. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us in today's session. Um, I have, was very, very fortunate. I didn't have to do a lot of arm twisting uh, to get uh, Dr. Rashila to, Prof. Rashila to agree to talk to us. Uh, and I can't think of anyone better to share with us uh, today's topic, which is enhancing research, our research through stakeholder engagements, which we know is such an important thing uh, when we're talking about uh, going, not just, just talking about output, but talking about outcomes and the impact of our research on, and both in social sciences and also in sciences and interdisciplinary research. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce our speaker, Professor Dato Dr. Rashila Ramli. I'm sure some of you already know of her or know her. And she is currently the principal, a principal fellow at the Institute of Malaysian and International Studies, ICMAS at UKM and visiting professor of the United Nations University, International Institute of Global Health. Um, she is a professor of political science and former director of the Institute of Malaysian and International uh, studies, uh, ICMAS, which I mentioned earlier at UKM, and uh, she has a multidisciplinary background, which is why I thought she was just the perfect person to talk to people from different backgrounds. She has a bachelor's degree in chemistry from Illinois and a master's degree in business management, and then a PhD in political science from Arizona. I mean, how interdisciplinary can you get, right? And her areas of specializations are very interesting. She, her areas include political development, gender and politics, and human security. So you could ask her questions about that later. Her research areas cover global ASEAN and promoting social inclusion through SDGs and public policies. And in 2015, uh, she led a team, a substantive team for the Malaysian Parliament at the ASEAN Interparliamentary Assembly, or IPA. Her current research is on localizing SDGs in 10 parliamentary constituencies under the All Parliamentary Parties Group Malaysia. And she's also, actually, she was a key, she is a key member of APEC 2020, uh, the substantive team of APEC 2020. And her professional engagement includes. Uh, She's the president of the Malaysian so Social Science Association, member of the Council of Security Cooperation in Asia Pacific, Malaysia, assistant sec gen of the National Council for Women's Organization uh, and Malay of Malaysia and co-chair of the Malaysian SDG Academic Network. So, I mean, with all this experience and her background, I think that we all want to hear from her. So it gives me great, 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 great pleasure to call on uh, Dato, Professor Dato Dr. Rashila Ramli to present, uh, to talk to us on enhancing research through stakeholder engagement. And she will be sharing on SDGs and her APEC projects. So over to you, Rash and Areha, you'll be sharing the slides, yeah? And I will turn off my mic now. All over to you. Rash, you need to turn on your mic. And uh, how much time do I have for the presentation itself? Um, say about 40 minutes, then we can have time for Q&A. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Okay, great. All right. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. Salam sejahtera. Uh, thank you very much, Prof. Staff, for the invitation to this session here today. Uh, I'm very happy. I'm very blessed to be here, actually, to share whatever little knowledge that I have. Uh, the, the experience that we've gone through, you know, so that I've gone through through all these years. Uh, just a little background. Yeah, I have been in research for the past uh, ooh, 20, 25 years almost since I got back from the States. So, you know, and have gone up through in different, different ways within the university and in different areas. So let me just uh, go straight to the, to the slides because I just would like, because our time is not much. And there's so much you can talk about, actually. So enhancing research through stakeholder engagement. Yeah. Um, as we all know, in order to get from your output to your outcome, there are a lot of things that will go along the way that needs to be taken care of. And seriously, uh, in many cases, sometimes we do not pay enough attention to our stakeholders. So this is what I like to stress on in our our discussion, the sharing this morning, okay? So I have divided the topics for discussion into three. 
the stakeholders and their roles. There are many roles that they play, there are many kinds of stakeholders. Secondly, different levels of engagement, whether it's the one the ring, as I say, closer to you, a bit further, or it can be from the international perspective. So there are many levels of engagement that you can do. And sometimes you have to build those engagement even from now, not even knowing whether they might be your stakeholder in the future. So these are the things that we have to pay attention to yeah, as we move in, in as we do uh, our research or as we build our networks. So stakeholders is also about networking. So it's very important that we look into that. So levels of engagement. And finally, I'd like to share two cases, two projects that actually I'm on. Uh, the first the first one will be on the APPGM program. This is the All Party uh, Parliamentary Group Malaysia program. I will talk about it later. And then the APEC program. The APEC, we just completed, but the writing is not done yet. The, the, the major work has been done. We have maybe another, I would say, 10, 15%. 10% left in terms of this work for the country. Okay, so we move on. So let me go on with the, who are the stakeholders, yeah? So stakeholders are those people who have interest in your research project. They can affect the outcomes, okay? They can be affected or they are affected by the outcomes. So they can be from, you know, one end to the other end. So they may be the, be the beneficiaries, so if they are affected by the outcome, okay? They can be supportive. Most of them are very supportive of your work. But you must also take note of those who are less supportive or they might be critical of your work because that can, uh, it might, hopefully it doesn't derail you, but sometimes they can give constructive criticism to it and make your work better. So there are always uh, uh, the the... Uh, contradiction sometimes when you deal with your stakeholders. So who are they? Once again, they have interest in your work. They can affect the outcome or they are affected by the outcome. Can be supportive as well as they might be uh, less supportive or critical of your work. Okay, so those are the stakeholders that you need to keep in mind. Okay, so we go on. And what kind of roles do they play? Stakeholders do play many roles. Of course, you. I, I put the researchers in the middle because if you are the head of the research group, you know your research team. Uh, they may come from different faculties. They may be cross faculties. Usually, what I have to deal with would be people, uh, researchers from different faculties or institutes. So we form a team because of the need of the expertise. So it's not. It's a. It's very seldom now we do research in a very silo manner, just from one faculty. Okay. Uh, unless it is really fundamental research, then maybe. But generally, you build up a team, and that comes across from all the different uh, faculties, depending on the need of your research, of the, the work that you need to do. So, you know, they have their issues also that you need to deal with. Yeah? Sometimes we have faculty institute uh, problems that we need to deal with. So, so these are issues. Okay, what roles? So as researchers... And then uh, definitely the funders, you know, the, whoever gives you the grant, it might be the government, it might be an, uh, a multinational NGO, it might be a company. They all have their needs. So you need to be aware of what are the needs of the funders as well. Because these are stakeholders. Because in the, if you do well, chances are you may get a second grant, an extension, those kind of things. Or they may introduce you to other funders, future funders. So... Keep an eye on such things, yeah? Uh, an advisory board. Now, this might be your senior professors. Don't forget your senior professors because they have a wealth of knowledge and they have good connections. So keep them close, okay? Your emeritus, uh, your, yeah, your very senior professors, they may already retire, but it doesn't matter because seriously, an academician is always an academician to me, you know? So... Put them on your advisory board. So advisory capacity placed by play by stakeholders. Yeah? And those who are impacted by the outcome, yeah, these are usually the beneficiaries. This would be maybe the group of respondents that you have, the group of informers, uh, leads, 
uh, lead person that you interview. Uh, so these are the people who, who might benefit from your results. At the same time, um, some of your results may be useful for different ministries, agencies. So it depends. Okay, so I would also include them in terms of uh, the beneficiaries of your uh, of your result of, of your research. And another group would be from your result. You know, you can actually give them uh, or you can offer them uh, some some uh, the, some of the, some aspect of the findings. So these are policy makers, policy makers who can actually. Uh, further your research in the future in terms of maybe field of research and so on. So you, you, you can look into the different roles which can be played by the stakeholders. Yeah, They might be the funders, they might be giving advisory capacity, uh, different groups of researchers, your subgroupings, uh, the beneficiaries themselves, as well as policy makers. These are what I could identify at this point. And later on, I'm sure with the, uh, the audience here, there are over almost 60 of of us together here uh, later on please share further because we you can you know through your own experience uh, please add to these roles that they have played uh, in terms of your own work and uh, this can benefit the the, the 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 talk that we have this morning okay we go on okay levels of engagement all right now if you look at the levels of eng engagement basically i put it into four uh, you as the core group, core project members, okay, and as I mentioned, this can be from faculties and so on. So levels of engagement can then move into those who are managing your research in a sense. Uh, at least with UKM, we have what we call the Center for Research and Innovation Management. I'm sure different universities will have similar names, but it's basically research and management. So there are rules that they have that we need to be aware of uh, university management basically and uh, the bursar you know looks after our money and so on so that that will be level two so it's still within the university within a closer network that you have levels of engagement stakeholders thirdly this would be those in your what i call local partners these are outside yeah outside the university uh, this will link directly with your uh, results. They may not be within the research projects, but they can impact. Okay, so levels of management will be outside the university area, but um, they are very important in terms of your work. So local partners uh, at this level, it could be uh, the, say, the local government, uh, it could be communities if you're working, say, within the Felda area. So you have the Felda management. So this is outside. Yeah. And finally, external partners, internal or external partners. This could be UN agencies. Yeah? In Malaysia, we have uh, 16 uh, UN agencies, 12. We have residents here in Malaysia. But there are a total of about 16. So some of them are actually in Bangkok or even in Jakarta. So these are international agencies. You may be working with other international agencies, such as, uh, for me, ASEAN, APEC, yeah, interregional agencies more than anything else. Uh, sometimes professional organizations that deals within your field. Yeah. Uh, that might also be that level, the international level of engagement that you may have. So look into, for me, I always look into who are in the networks. Who do I have already? If I don't have, who may have them? So I try to identify if I will need, uh, if I will need a certain networks in order to usually in writing a proposal at the proposal writing stage. Yeah, you want to strengthen the proposal as best as you can. And one of the ways are to, to indicate to your funder that, you know, you do have this kind of networks that you can actually uh, benefit from uh, and that you can rely on. Okay, so levels of engagement. We move on. So the important thing now is to link between your stakeholders and their roles. So I put the two previous slides together in this kind of a matrix. Okay, 
So you have your core group, universities, local partners, international, and the roles, which are the advisory roles or the funding role or the researching role, uh, those that we need information from and those who are making uh, policies. So I just cut across those two and you can see that you know you can you can you can get some kind something of this matrix at this point yeah boy time flies huh? all right uh we move on we can we can come back to all this later later okay how do you manage stakeholders uh there are three I suppose you can call it principles. I'm not sure, but uh, in in managing your stakeholders, yeah, you've got to be organizationally within your research community, or your own. If you are heading a research project, even that, yeah, within that, you got to be clear. Clarify your objective. What are their roles? What do you expect them to play? Roles of stakeholders. Write it within your research framework. So this is more like, for example, when I was the director of uh, ICMAS. Uh, I got this all written down, yeah? I clarify what objective, who are our stakeholders because we are such an international uh, grouping. So I need to make sure who should we foreground at a certain time. So clarify objective write, written in uh, research framework that you have. You even need to allocate re resources to cultivate your stakeholders, uh, plan learning and reward for it effective management, uh, I mean, engagement. This is more for the if you are head of a research group than maybe for the other researchers, you know. So if they bring in uh, the engagement, then the, maybe you have a certain reward for them. It might be a certificate, even be just to say, you know, thank you. That would be good. I mean, you know, there are many ways to reward a person. So to acknowledge that they brought in this uh, engagement. So that's important. Uh, secondly, the values and the, the, the core thing, yeah, it is about shared commitment within the entire team that stakeholders are important. So these are things you, you build in within your group that uh, it is important to, to pay attention to the stakeholders. Uh, there are some people who are so silo thinking in terms of their research to the point that, you know, there are those who are engaging with them, they may not pay as much attention or those even with your respondents and your informants. So we must have the mindset that these stakeholders are important. Networking is very important. So foster it as a shared commitment within the entire team. Recognize that potential tension, as I mentioned, between and among stakeholders can exist. So this is something you need to be aware, especially as a, uh, as a head of a, a research group. Yeah? Even if you're not heading a group yet, you may be participating in others. And uh, in those cases also, you can see this kind of dynamics going on. So just be aware, keep an eye on it, but have in your mindset that, you know, stakeholders uh, uh, engagement is very important. And uh, the last one under this practice, yeah, we have uh, organization, the values itself, a shared value, values, and then uh, practices. Okay, these are with partners. These are activities that you do need to hold with partners, yeah? Plan stakeholders' activities within your project. Uh, consider how their input from the stakeholders can be, syst this, this is the keyword, systematically collated, analyzed, and used. So which means that from the de design stage of your research project, you already have this in mind, yeah? Since the stakeholders are important, their inputs are important, have them collected and then you know every if you have a uh, say a one year project on a quarterly basis you already have their input so you make sure that uh, whatever that they say which can be used and will make your research better are already will be included during your meetings with the stakeholders uh, i will share with you later in the two examples that i have on the the, the, the sharing or the systematic collated analyze and use uh, version of this, eh? how to make stakeholders um, uh, to, to, to benefit as much as you can from your stakeholders. Okay, now we're going to go to the examples. All right. Okay, I have about another 20 minutes, so about 10 minutes ish. 
And then we'll open it up for discussion. I'm sure you have a lot to share also, and I'm very happy. We'll be very happy to uh, take questions later as well as, of course, to 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 listen listen to your comments. All right, we move on. Okay, this is the APPGM project. Yeah, the All Parliamentary Party. No, actually, it's the other way. All Party Parliamentary Group Malaysia for SDG. It is called the APPGM SDG project. And before you change the slide, Riha, as you can see, I have a number of logos up there. Because to some extent, uh, there, there is a component of this project that comes from UNESCO, but mostly it is from uh, Parliament. So the logo, the second logo, yeah, is the APPGM logo. Uh, the third is myself through ICMAS, and then finally. We have a lot of researchers who are also members of the Persatuan Science Social Malaysia, which have the Persatuan has been around for the since 1978. So it is uh, uh, so there is a whole group of researchers out there, and of course you're welcome to join it. Okay, so as you can see, uh, the the at the very bottom I have all the, all the SDGs listed, and uh, this is what I'm going to discuss in this particular uh, example. We move on. Yeah. All right. So 17 SDGs, but you don't need to study them in silo. But what we did was to look at them into, we, we uh, divided them into five different categories. Uh, right. Yeah, five different categories where you can group different SDGs together. Okay. For example, SDG 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 uh, pretty much fall under people. Okay. And then you have more of the environmental one that would fall under planet. And then you have on the right hand side, you have a number of others. This would fall uh, more under prosperity. So you deal with work, you deal with reduced inequalities, and so on. But if you look at the two at the bottom, number 16 and 17, okay, these are cross cutting. Why do I say they are cross cutting? Because number one, it deals with institutions, it deals with peace and justice. So this is about rules, about laws, and um, uh, organizations, basically, that would actually support all these different SDGs. Work, I wouldn't say support the SDGs, support the work which is done for the SDGs to, to, to advance it. And 17 is about partnership. Once again, partnership, stakeholders. And they are. it is being put at the bottom because of the bottom, meaning that it is uh, one of the foundations. Okay? for all of, of the work on SDGs. So this is how we look at it. So we move on. Now, under this project, just to share with you, because it only started this year, uh, but the, the work actually in trying to get this program going started right after SDG was launched, which was in 2016. Uh, there was a group of about 30 NGOs at that point got together because we really felt that development, which was uh, the SDG, which came from the United Nations, need to be taken in a very ser serious manner uh, in terms of helping the development of the countries in different ways. Yeah? So through the years, we worked through the years, meaning from 2016, 17, and 18, we worked through with many different possible stakeholders. So we were building up stakeholders engagement. We were making stakeholders engagement in different ways through industries, through the government. And um, we found that maybe the parliament is the way to go. So at that point, this was 2019, yeah, uh, we managed to engage with the Malaysian parliament at that point. And uh, yeah, because at, yeah, in 2019, and through the, the, the former speaker, yeah, uh, Tan Sri Arif, at that point, we managed to actually put forth the idea that this should be a bipartisan thing, multi-partisan, you name it. Okay. So following the British example of APPGM, so Malaysia's, the, the Malaysian parliament started the first APPGM, and this is on SDG, because it is not something which is, uh, what do you call that, something which is... Uh, uh, controversial since this is development for all. So that's the background. So the theme is to localize SDGs via members of parliament, uh, which means they have to volunteer to be part of it. So that's another stakeholders group right there. Bipartisan October 17, it was uh, it was the, the, the program was launched. 
uh, it was made up of both Dewan Rakyat and Dewan Negara. But the Secretariat is actually the Malaysian uh, CSO Alliance. Yeah? And uh, PSSM, Persatuan Science Social, is a member of that. So you can see the stakeholders are actually very dynamic here. It's not just one particular group of stakeholder. Okay, so the government allocated two million to run this project through the MOF, given to the Parliament, and to run the SDGs. So these are the different members in the Secretariat. As you can see, we come from different kind of uh, groups as well. There are academicians in there. There are NGOs in there. Uh, even ISIS, yeah, uh, our International Institute of Strategic Studies, uh, as well as some consultancies. So we do have a number of uh, different groupings inside there as well. We move on. The purpose is to localize SDG uh, in 2020. The method was to do 10 parliamentary constituencies in the seven states, uh, Kedah, Selangor, Pahang, Terengganu. Johor did not come through for this year. Uh, hopefully, this coming year it will come through. We have Johor, uh, uh, sorry, Terengganu did not come through for this year, but we do have Johor, Selang, Sabah and Sarawak. And the idea is to address especially poverty and inequality. Inequalities. These are the cross-cutting agenda impacting economic, social, and environmental concern. I have to give you a bit of this background because then you can see more of the engagement. Yeah, uh, we move on. There are four phases to the project. We need to do mapping of the local issues in parliamentary constituencies. We need to do capacity building. We need to identify or prioritize uh, local solutions. Yeah, and once we do that in phase one, we move into phase two, which is actually executing the capacity building and the solution projects at that level, together with a midterm review. Then we move into phase three, further implementation of uh, especially solution projects, and uh, to do the final eval final evaluation in the process. And phase four is uh, writing, uh, writing of, of the report. Yeah, to be presented to parliament. Uh, by right, it was supposed to be this month in December, but the project has been extended to next uh, to March because we because of COVID, as you know. So we had to do that. We move on. Now stakeholders in all the phases, yeah, in phase one where we have to do issue mapping and on-site visit, we have of course the group of researchers. We have to engage the MPs and the MPs officers, government agencies, community leaders. CSOs, uh, the Speaker of Parliament himself, and then uh, the MOF. Okay, so that was at the first phase. Second phase, we moved to, uh, we have to have selection uh, committee because of the fact that we have to choose uh, uh, the capacity building and the special, uh, so, sorry, solution projects for each different constituency. Yeah, and uh, you have lead coordinators, uh, project, manage uh, partners as well as definitely the people themselves the communities themselves these are the beneficiaries so beneficiaries would be those that we work with in terms of uh, the, the the program which was identified but most of all uh, uh, yeah it depends on which SDGs work we were doing just to share with you I had to I was assigned as lead coordinator for Sabah so I have to I have to constituencies that I work on in Persiangan and Papar. So in Papar, our beneficiaries were actually the fishermen as well as the paddy planters. Uh, in Persiangan, uh, we identified the situation there in terms of uh, health care, uh, especially for the women and girls. So this was some of, these are some, are some of the projects that we're working on. In phase three, uh, yeah, we need to work further into the program, but the monitoring will come into play. And we have a team. This is another group yeah, of uh, mostly academicians who will be doing monitoring and evaluation of the solution projects. So uh, that one I am coordinating also. In fact, we are in the process of uh, recruiting uh, evaluators. So if you're interested in that, that is something that uh, you can jump on. Yeah, uh, we're going to be we're doing that recruitment right now. 
next month would be the, the January would be the month for um, training and the evaluation and then it's, it's only a four months project yeah, some of these projects are quite short actually and uh, finally in the right in the last phase yeah which is right writing the integrated project of course the researchers the lead uh, uh, the lead researchers we have in the group we have to uh, present it back to the MPs and then uh, uh, with the MOF it is more about the auditing yeah because of the finance and glad to say that we have gotten another round of funding this is to be done for 2021 uh, involving 20 more constituencies uh, so there are what 220 constituencies in Malaysia so no matter what happens election or no election the project goes on because this is a uh, multi-party so it does not in that sense it does not matter uh, the political part of it is not too problematic for us yeah so we move on so stakeholders just just a bit more on this stakeholders engagement with local uh, local stakeholders so as I was saying, as my role was as lead coordinator in the first phase, and, and I have to carry it for the year, basically. Uh, so I have to engage with the MP's office. I had to, uh, during the on-site visit, I was lucky because it was just before before MCO. So I managed to do the site visit. I think it was in around the 20th of February. So I spent about 10 days, uh, 20th of February until around 28th and did both uh, constituencies yeah first i did papar and then i went into uh, persiangan but i had a group of researchers with me plus the local ngos because they know the they, they know the area better uh, and then had the cooperation of the uh, government agencies both state and federal government agencies so these are I, things that you have to deal with if you have state agencies federal agencies there might be some tension even between them so you have to deal with all these things, yeah? Uh, so we had dialogues in the different levels. And at the end, we actually prioritize the issues. In my case, it was for Papar and for Persiangan. Uh, but as I said, for this phase, we have 10 constituencies across the country. And we want to recruit another 20, for 20, uh, another 20 constituencies for 2021. So that is in the process. We move on to the last slide on this project okay so just a snapshot from the prioritization of the uh, issues okay so issues are highly contextual that is important so, uh, but there are cross-cutting matters that can be common for all so you have an issue of community development you have issue of waste management uh, you can have the issue of a uh, migrant legislation legislation uh, migrant and refugee and then in Petaling and Selayang it is the issue of urban poverty yeah? uh, in the urban areas uh, so this is so different SDGs uh, that you can link you know link up to uh, or identify with when you do this kind of work um, so this is the snapshot of the niche themes of each of the constituency for 2020 all right so uh i will move on to the next one okay time is okay okay this one is a slightly different kettle of fish i hope i got that as the right expression yeah you know when you have a uh, prof staff there uh, i usually like to make this kind of joke so anyway uh it is a bit difficult when you make a joke and you can't see what your uh participants are doing there all right we move on uh, hosting this is hosting APEC 2020 okay now a little bit of background APEC was established APEC stands for Asia Pacific Economic uh, Cooperation okay so it was established back in 1989 when Malaysia was actually one of the founding members and Malaysia actually hosted APEC in 1998 for the first time it hosted that and by 2020 this year there are 20 member economies okay uh, and uh, ICMAS was chosen to work with APEC substantive committee to ensure deliverables are achieved on time couple of things here uh, in APEC we don't call them states or countries 
you must call them member economies. If not, we'll get into trouble between some of the uh, countries yeah, uh, in, in dealing with the issues. I mean, technically, uh, with, say, Taiwan and China. So these are why, before it used to be Hong Kong as well. So you, you're dealing, you, you, in APEC, every, every, every member is an, econ is an economy. Yeah? So 21 member economy. So these are technical terms that, as researchers, we need to be aware of when you're dealing with uh, different organizations. Okay, and um, what was the tasking? Uh, but, but before that, in 1998, when Malaysia was ho was hosting, actually, I just came back from uh, finishing my PhD like three years before that. And uh, I was seconded to ICMAS in a way to help at that time, Professor Tam Siwian, to, uh, who's now an, our emeritus, to run the apex study center Con consortium in 1998 so that was my first introduction of apex really uh, at that point but it stayed in my in my system yeah and because it stayed in my system i think to some extent uh, that was how we in icmas now got to handle this big job uh, for the country in uh, 2020 move on okay what were the tasking we need to develop the framework towards developing the theme and the priority areas. So this is how APEC works. Uh, coordinating the program um, to support APEC. Uh, drafting uh, the concluding statements and declarations, uh, giving input and supporting uh, supporting the SOM. SOM is Senior Official uh, Minister. Yeah. Uh, chair office as well as the chairmanship. So Malaysia being the chairman, the the yeah being the chair for APEC in 2020. So you know that we just fit, conclude everything. The country just concluded all the agreements and so on as of uh, it was in November, November 20th, I believe it was uh, when we had all the conclusion done. Okay, we move on. So now. How does uh, how how do you start all this kind of work? Yeah, first of all, we need to know what kind of frame uh, the the major partner is having. So our major partner here is MITI, yeah, the Ministry of International Trade and Industry. So MITI, so they did they did identify the theme as well as as the priority area in terms of the tajo in terms of the titles. Okay, so the theme was optimizing human potential towards a resilient future of shared prosperity, pivot, prioritize, and progress. Three priority areas, improving narrative of trade and investment, inclusive economic participation through digital economy and uh, technology, and uh, sorry, driving, yeah, uh, innovative sustainability. Now, if you look at all the themes, what we had to do was develop all the papers for this, okay? So while they may have a, a two-pager deal in the beginning, so you need to have a full-blown research papers on all these priority areas. So if you look at the deliverables, remember the three substantive papers, specific position papers on food security, future of work, circular economy, responsible business. Then there is another big document, inputs for APEC beyond 2020, because APEC has its typical of different regional organizations, they usually have like a 20-year plan, 10-year plan, and so on. So it just happened that with APEC, 2020 was the, the end of the last plan that they had, which was called the Bogor Goals from 1920. They have a 25-year plan, okay? So 2020, Malaysia has to come up with the document. What will happen? So I think it's beyond 2020. So uh, it is a document towards 2040. So this is how APEC is doing, has done its work. Uh, we also have to execute the APEC Study Center Consortium Conference, uh, which was the same thing that I did back in 1998. Yeah, And then for us academicians, okay, what possible Myra inputs that we need, can get out of this APEC project? Okay, about 17 uh, journal articles, and uh, we target 15 uh, policy papers from this particular project. So you must have those, those things already built in within a particular uh, project. So we move on. So once again, at the different levels, who are the partners? At the core group, you have ICMAS APEC. 
and there are about 20 researchers here from different faculties as well, not just from ICMAS, but different faculties and some outside even other universities. So this one is even bigger. Uh, we still have to use our university management system to manage the project for the finance part and so on. Uh, you know, the MOA and the agreement, all those kind of things need to be done. Uh, and partners, APEC, EPU, MOFA, Foreign Affairs, and MAFI. MAFI is uh, agriculture and uh, food and industry. If I'm, they just change eh, from MOA, they jadi MAFI in the latest government, current government. And uh, finally, we have to deal with, of course, the 21 APEC economies having their secretariat, APEC secretariat in Singapore. So these are the kind of uh, networks that we had to build. And seriously, in order to have this network, uh, when I was a still director back in 2016, this was when we started, started to put things in place. So if you want to do something big like this, the planning goes be much before and the engagement has with the stakeholders, specifically METI. Uh, we have to deal it back from 19, uh, 20, I think around 2018, we already approached METI. So it is, uh, it's not something that they call us, we went first because we know that this is very important for the country. And so sometimes you just have to be proactive and just go for it, okay? So we move on. I just have two more slides, I think. The overall engagement, yeah, at the international, local. I start with the secretariat at the, at the bottom right there because this is the one holding everybody, research program. Must have an editorial team, anything... Uh, any of the documents must be, we must make sure that the English is good, okay, before it goes out. So at that level, we have this very important group. Then the core researchers head from the different pro priority areas that move up into having maybe the uni management we could put on the side also, but because they're supporting us more than anything else. Then the partners, the different ministries because of the areas, yeah. And finally, at the international level, uh, this is actually in more indirectly we deal with them more indirectly because we must we we go through MITI to deal for us than anything else if we need something from a counterpart on the other side we'll just go through MITI and get it done you know uh, so we don't really deal with it directly okay second last slide um challenges challenges here yeah in APPGM, it's slightly different here, and in APPGM, like it or not, the political interest is there, especially when you're dealing with the MPs. And uh, uh, when we even when, when there was the change of government in, uh, in March, earlier this year, so what happened was we just, but it is bipartisan, so it's not too problematic. However, the head of the committee needs to be changed. So, because that was part of the bylaw within the within the within the, the the setting up of APPGM, so we had to do that. Of course, with uh, COVID nineteen, uh, we about three what three to five months we had to postpone some of the projects, so that has some problem. Uh, internal conflict of interest. Sorry, uh, I do not know what the two 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 is. I might have typed it sometime. Uh, this deals with some of the you know stakeholders within APPGM itself. So we need to make sure that lead coordinators are also not solution providers. If you want to become a solution provider, you release your position in one side in order to hold another position because we don't want conflict of interest to occur. So these are the things that in stakeholder management you need to because we have to show our we need to make sure that we are transparent in in all of our work this this is government money i mean sorry taxpayers money all of our money actually running all these projects okay in apec the challenges was not too bad except for the fact that because of covid uh from july onwards everything had to be virtually done uh and that caused quite a lot of uh uh a lot of problems because of the fact that you know a number of the programs really had to be uh, in done hands on because they have an exhibition pro all those kind of things so the government had to be selective and regardless it was it it, it, it was done yeah uh, despite everything so another thing that came through as a challenge for us at uh, in ICMAS at that time they wanted certain other papers that was not predicted in the beginning since with with uh, the pandemic there were papers on for example future of work 
things that we were, were we were writing in February, you know, which we were predicting to come to happen like three years, two years from now, suddenly with COVID because of the virtual technology and so on, things were compressed in the beginning. So, you know, there were unexpected things. So when I say unexpected papers, this is what I meant that needed to be changed. For example, in MOA, food security, all these kind of things. Yeah. So we had to redo those things. So finally, last slide, conclusion. Yeah, generally, uh, stakeholders, they can very su be supportive of your program, although some can be very critical. And neg engagement with stakeholders should start at the design part of the program, and they cannot be taken for granted. You must have regular engagement with uh, with uh, MITI. I had it, we had it with their technical committee all the time. Yeah, every two months or so, we have the technical, sometimes monthly, depending. With the APPGM, definitely we have to report to the parliament, uh, to the parliamentary committee. It's not the parliament, parliamentary committee uh, on a quarterly basis. So these are the kind of engagement you, we need to put in all the thing, all the time. And finally, uh, managing stakeholder relations is a continuous task and it can be time consuming. But seriously, it's worth the effort. So that's my sharing for today. Thank you so much, and I'll be very happy to listen to you and ask for any question, uh, uh, you know, answer any question. Thank you. Thank you. you Thank you. Thank you, Professor Dato, uh, Dr. Rashila. I mean, I think there was a wealth of information in your presentation. And, um, you know, just I, I'm glad you concluded. I had the same notes I wanted to remind everyone. Uh, and what you have shown us is that engaging stakeholders is actually necessary, but it's a complex thing that we perhaps take for granted. Uh, and it has to start, I, I would say, pre-design stage already, mm -hmm. right? As you right. mentioned. Yeah, and then it's just throughout. And um, it, I think what you mentioned, we, a keyword there, systematically collating, mm -hmm. uh, analyzing the data, and rather than just putting down some names and yep. saying that those are our stakeholders, then of course you have your benefactors and the fact that there would be there, there would be difficult stakeholders to manage. So you need resources. So I mean, you know, there's so energy, many energy. Yes, yes, energy, time. But it's something that we need to do, and perhaps as right. academics, we we have not been prepared for it. Mm -hmm. So there is a very pertinent question that I would like to read out from uh, Nur Afika binti Muhammad Saleh who asked you, she says, I'm interested in what you said, uh, you Dato, and about the engagement of researchers for m &E purposes. I'm working closely with a local NGO that delivers health services to key population. And I share the same sentiment that researchers have a large role uh, in ensuring that the service implementation is effective and supported by evidence, I wonder if there is some sort of training offered to researchers who are interested to do community level m and &E as part of research. So that was her question uh, in terms of training. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Th uh, thank you, uh, Nor Africa, for the question on m and &E. This is one thing that I think we really need to pay attention to. A lot of times projects have been done uh, you know, uh, even with the government agencies and so on, but the m and &E part is not the strongest uh, section. So definitely it is very important to have m and &E included in any projects. Yeah. So in APPGM, this is where we are actually having one group of what we call evaluators. So there will be a training of evaluators in looking into the project. Uh, into the whole, uh, not project, uh, into not the program yet. It, uh, we are looking into the solution projects that we are providing in the ten uh, constituencies. So yes, there there is a training for evaluators coming up. So for this program, if anybody is interested, seriously, we are recruiting evaluators right now. We are in the process. We're going to be selecting the evaluators uh, at the end of this month. And then uh, by next month, we have the TOE. But if you just want a TOE program, that can be organized also. Yeah, whether it's 3A, PPGM, or PSSM, because we do offer this kind of training for evaluators to evaluate projects. Uh, basic idea is when the evaluation is being done, you look at the design, the planning. Uh, yeah, the, 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 there are four phases here. Eh? Design, planning, implementation, as well as the, the feedback. Uh, section itself so the evaluators will need to go in look at all the documents in the very beginning what is being said you know what is being said the proposal the reports and whatnot have an interview 
with the maybe with the head of the project or or the committee their committees and then have the interview also with the participants those recipients of their projects and so on because you need to have a triangulation so that's the very general answer to that lah. Uh, in terms of but yes okay. there are TOEs for such things so you're gonna, gonna have a rush of emails after this yeah. <laughs> for the training we have another thank you so much and we have another question from uh, Amy Fan who Amy. says thank you for your sharing what roles have you created within your team that mm -hmm. perhaps does not exist in you know your typical research teams to support managing stakeholder relations okay what roles, roles. Mm -hmm. uh, what roles I have created yeah in your teams within your teams you know that that perhaps doesn't exist in our typical research teams so to support your managing stakeholder relations okay um uh, i would say this there are two there are two levels uh, at one level is that it's not so much of a role but the the remember under the principles uh the one slide under principles the organization the upper number to the values and then the practice okay so the pra under the practice we always include uh, within whether it's it's not so much usually it's the research officer within the research officer we will assign a task and what if the one of the biggest tasks is to ensure that uh, our stakeholders you know are informed that on the quad they, they have to prepare for the quarterly meetings Okay, so 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 stakeholder engagement at the quarterly meeting or with with APEC it was the uh to technical technical committee of APEC. So our research officers are assigned a specific role to collect all those informations of the officers in charge. Okay, because you need to have sometimes you don't need we don't need to go to the boss we just need the second or third layer. It is so important to en to ensure we have their latest phone number and and build rapport from the beginning. And then uh, in other cases, uh, you know you did, so it doesn't have to be a formal role, but it is part of the job description of our research officers. To engage in this kind of thing, identify who do you deal with all the time, establish the contact, and if there is a small makan, kalau dulu lah, bring them to the institute, do the makan because like it or not, they are the one who gets the job done. Okay, yang atas tu design surat. Okay, but the real job, if there's going to be a gatekeeper, ke yang nak slow the case or whatever, is really uh, at these levels. Sometimes it's through no fault of them because they may not be getting the proper instruction and so on. But you cultivate this kind. So, yeah, for our research officers, uh, we make sure that they know. And uh, the main major staff, lah, the assistant registrar and so on within the institute. Uh, so, so for that, if it is within the research group, so a, a much smaller ad, a, a entity that you have, uh, sometimes you may just have to be the person. The reason being because you are the one who have the contact. But the thing is this, as you, for me right now is to pass down the networks. Okay, so you bring in your other colleagues, your younger colleagues, and bring them to the meetings when you have to do engagement. Because you want to see how, so that they can see how it is being done. And the idea is to pass, oh, to, to, to share and to pass the contacts. Because they may need it for other jobs, so you, you are moving on to other things. Okay, so 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 that is uh, the the general answer like The more formal yeah. one is with the research officer, but within the team, if you are the one with the network, release those networks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Good. And and so actually, it's like it's not it's like multi layer marketing, but this is like multi layer networking, right? So you, yes, you actually have to have uh, to strategize and and. Yep. not just not just try and do everything yourself oh no 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 right? no you cannot yeah. you cannot, yeah. you cannot yeah. do yeah i mean you can but you can't do as much yes exactly so it's not not as effective thank no. you so yeah lesson learned guys and uh, we have another question from nick nur ainin sofia nick mat okay. uh, she said what is the due diligence you need to do to initiate engagement with different stakeholders perhaps in particular government related agencies perhaps you kind of touched on that in your presentation but mm -hmm. uh, so maybe maybe uh, I, I think it's that difficult sometimes tense uh 
not not tense, but sometimes because of maybe conflict of interest. Uh, I, I think that's what uh, Sophia is asking. Uh, how do you initiate engagement with different stakeholders? What kind of due diligence do you need to do, uh, particularly okay. with government-related agencies? Yeah, yeah. With okay. Uh, in uh, 2017, I actually uh, got a project from. I, w I was asked through UNESCO to run a project on um, valorization. The project is called Valorization of Evidence. Okay, and uh, you and they want uh, and 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 we need to work with one particular ministry. Okay, uh, while Ikmas was the lead researcher, there was no way we can get data and so on unless you link up. So. In order to do that, you have to be very clear, very upfront from the very beginning in the first meeting. Okay, the first meeting is very important and to make sure there are the right people at that meeting. Uh, so you have to do your homework first. So it is really to be clear as to, to state your clear, your objective, what is expected of the partners. Yeah, especially if this is the first time that you're building the, you're building this this, uh, this this partnership with a new ministry that you have not, not worked before. So in order to facilitate such things, you try to find out the background of all those people first. Okay, uh, paperwork-wise, your yeah, due diligence in terms of be, being clear of your objective and being clear of what is expected, what are the terms of reference, all those kind of things you have to, you have to do it in the very beginning. But that is only one part. Seriously, the other part is all the human factor that you have to deal with. So knowing both, if not, if you go in, you know, hoping that, uh, and, and it's, it's very, very interesting, you know, you sit on one side of the table, you have the government officers sitting on the other side of the, so, so what I do with my people is I try to break them up already from the very beginning. You know, you go early, you don't position yourself in such a way. So these are all techniques to, to change the environment. Yeah. And that, because that will make life a little easier. Yes. But seriously, the objective and the outcome and the expected yeah. from the very beginning needs, need to be clear. Yes. yes. So you need to be very upfront, put everything on the table. Yep. Um, and then it's interesting that you talk about physical distance. I mean, you know, in, in now, now, now it's even more challenging because we are all in our own, you know, rooms and houses doing yeah. it. So I'm wondering yeah. how perhaps, you know, to add on to that question, how do we, how do you deal with uh, stakeholder engagement uh, when we are all online? Uh, yep. Well, with APEC recently, I mean, seriously, the meetings are all online. Yes. Uh, but I think because we have already built the repo. Okay, the interesting thing is going to be next year when we do APPGM cohort 2. Mm. In the 20 new, uh, especially in the first three months because COVID is still out there. Uh, so this is going to be, I think what we need to do is uh, in the very beginning, have just very small group discussion. Uh, five or six so you can you still need to have maybe one or two physical but small very small group we cannot have those big groups anymore yeah uh yeah and then the, i think once that is broken i think the online will be okay yeah you yeah. know because it's still yeah. within the country yes yeah. yeah so this is going to be a challenge yes. But, yes. Okay. we're all yeah. up for challenge right yes yes of course <laughs> We are made of we're made of steel. <laughs> well, I think you know it's coming up. It's it's coming up to eleven o'clock. Well, it is eleven o'clock now. So ah. you know, and people may have got other classes and so on. Okay. So you know, thank you for the questions, everyone. Thank you so you know we did not expect so many people to join us. So we're we're yeah. really happy because I think for those of you who. Are, who heard uh dr rashila you learned a lot and a lot of things for you to think about we will we'll be sharing this recording and um some of them said we don't want to miss out on you know what you said earlier about the training and also sure. about yeah so we will i will be in contact with you and i will share if you don't yeah. mind with um, people at um uh if there are opportunities please, yeah please, please. Uh, because we all have you know we all we all have the serve the same purpose right sure yeah for the nation so it will be good if we can also learn from each other and support sure. each other in whatever we do so please join me everyone in thanking our speaker for today i think this was this is one of the best presentations that i have heard in terms and i've learned a lot as i'm sure everyone else has thank you so much for giving us this time uh, Dr. Rashila and thank you. Um, <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you, Steph, for inviting again. And then I really appreciate everybody allocating, you know, one hour or whatever <laughs> it is of your time here today because I know we all have our work to do. Yeah. So, yeah. Just contact me if there we'll is anything for it. Okay? We'll yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Great. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> it was great. Thank you so much. Hey, Steph, no problem at all. <laughs> Banyak lagi nak cerita, tapi you tahu lah kan? Ah, uh, yes, yes. It's like, I think we need to get you back for, you know, hopefully when we can do face-to-face, -face, kan, uh, Riha? We need to, we need to oh, bring yeah. uh, the tarik. <laughs> no one. problem. Uh, because no. I think there's a lot of, like, the mecha you have certain mm. mechanisms that work, um, which you have, like, I think trial and error. So, uh, that would really help us to kind of yeah. I think uh, I have to document it lah. You do, because, yeah, because these you are little do. things that you know you don't. Yeah. You just sometimes you do it by instinct also. Yes, of course. Uh, uh, you do it by instinct, yeah. you know, like, because you have also the experience and right, you know? right. You know, yeah. you even have to yeah, especially when face to face stakeholders. Okay. Sometimes you can think of engagement. Yes, yes. Yeah, if necessary, you go and makan nasi lemak with them. Right, first. right. The tarik sessions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. These, yeah. these are and yeah. these are things that you can't teach, you know. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so by, by learning from you, you know. Um, yeah, you try. Oh, I can see uh, <laughs> Edmund Gomez here. Good friend. Hi. Hi, Hi. Hi Mashallah. Hello. Hello.